Well, good morning, Hope Community Church. It's good to be back with you. I miss you. Uh, had a great week away with my family. Last week we had uh, Pastor Daryl Herter here, and that service was only uh, outside. It wasn't recorded, but Daryl did a tremendous job with it. Wonderful to be with him. Hey, we're going to pick back up in the book of John. We're going to be in John chapter 10. So why don't I pray for us, and we'll begin. Tell me, Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity to be here. And Lord, as we open up your word, Lord, God, minister to us. Give us the portion that we need. Lord, fill us with your grace. Fill us with your strength, Lord. Lord, most of all, I pray that you would fill us with your love. It says in 1 Corinthians 13, for love conquers all. Lord, we thank you for this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you open up your Bibles to John chapter 10, this is a very famous passage. There's a lot of uh, verses that every now and then you'll hear people throw out these different verses. And maybe today as we're reading this, you might go, oh, now I recognize it. That's where that is. Today's sermon is called Living Life with Robbers and Thieves. Living Life with Robbers and Thieves. Our three for the road, number one, is this. Do you know his voice? Do you know his voice? Let's look at John chapter 10, verse 1. Jesus is speaking, and he says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. <clears throat> Excuse me. So... Uh, this is a pretty easy concept to think about. Uh, if you own a home and somebody is trying to get into your home through a window or breaking down a door, you probably would uh, summarize and accurately so that this is someone who means no good. Jesus is speaking here and he says, he who enters a sheepfold by the door or rather what climbs up by some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Shepherds, back in those days, would allow their sheep to graze on open hillsides so that they could see them from very far away. Sheep are very recognizable. Their, their wool is so white and they set off with the green grass, you can really see them accurately. But what would happen is at night, the shepherd would bring, and he would make some kind of makeshift sheepfold, basically a little fenced-in area. He would bring the sheep in, and he would get them in that area, and sometimes he would block off the door, or sometimes the shepherd even would sleep in the doorway so that sheep could not enter in and out without the shepherd knowing. He says, most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. So Jesus said, listen, only a friend, only the shepherd would go in and out of the appropriate door. Anyone else is a thief or a robber. Now, you hear those terms, and maybe a thief and a robber you think of is the same thing, but really I think they might be different. In other words, I believe that a thief is someone who sneaks and steals, and you might even not know it's happened. In other words, you could be down on the boardwalk in New Jersey and walking along, and a pickpocket might try and take your wallet. The idea of a pickpocket is that he would steal your wallet, get away, and you wouldn't even realize that your wallet is gone until you stop to get a slice of pizza or to get some ice cream. All of a sudden, you reach your back pocket and you realize that a thief has stolen your wallet. A robber, on the other hand, steals by force. It's almost as if they're hunting their prey. A robber might be someone who wakes out into a dark spot in a parking lot at a store. And maybe when you come out, you've got lots of groceries and lots of items that you've purchased and you're opening up your car and maybe your focus, you're not aware of your surroundings as well. And a robber comes, maybe pushes you down, hits you, steals from you. You know immediately that you've been robbed. 
I believe that Jesus says you need to hear my voice. Because there are thieves. Thieves who will steal from you and you won't even realize it until after it's happened. As well as abrupt robbers who will come in and by force take from you. Knowing the difference is very important. Look at verse 3. To him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hears his voice. Jesus is speaking of the shepherd. He says, to him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his sheep by name and he leads them out. Now, I think of this church, Home Community Church, and I think that the doorkeepers are the elders. Our job is to guard over this church, spiritually so, to pray and earnestly seek the Lord. We would never, ever want to intentionally or unintentionally lead this church in a way that would be contrary to where the Lord would want us to go. I always say that the best place in the world to be is wherever the Lord desires you to be. And that's what we truly believe. Now Jesus keeps speaking here though. He says in verse 3, To him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. Jesus says that his sheep know his voice. I've actually seen, you can look this up on, online on YouTube. You can see shepherds go out amongst their sheep and they'll bring someone with them and he'll say to the person, hey, make noises like this, call the sheep. And they'll call and those sheep won't even pick up their heads. They won't even turn. But as soon as the shepherd's voice is heard, the sheep immediately turn their head and they go towards the shepherd. It's pretty amazing. Verse 4, and when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. See, not only do the sheep know his voice, but the sheep will follow their shepherd. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he had spoken. Do you know his voice? You know, I've been challenged. You know, last week Daryl said a line that really hit me because I feel the same way. Daryl said some things last week that you know, kind of feel a little bit hard, maybe poke you a little bit. But I'm going to tell you that as Daryl was speaking, one of the things that hit me is Daryl said, hey, listen, I'm preaching to myself. And I feel that too because I want you to know I'm on this journey with you. But one of the things that I've been challenged with is often I read the Bible with an agenda. And what the agenda is, is I feel a certain way. I think certain things. I have opinions. And basically, what I want to do is read the Bible and have God reinforce what I think, what I feel, and my opinions. But you know, I think Jesus is saying, Eric, are you trying to search out for your feelings, your thoughts, your opinions, or are you truly pursuing me? See, the greatest compliment that David was ever given in the Old Testament, do you know what it was? God said he's a man after my own heart. See, I think David had this ability to engage with God and to just lay it all aside and say, all right, God, what? What do you want to tell me? What do you want to show me? And the challenge I've been having is to read the Bible and rather than saying, God, reinforce all these different things, I simply pray and say, God, illuminate my life. God, shine your light in the darkness of my mind. Shine your light in the darkness of my heart. And Lord, reveal two things to me. More of your grandeur. And Lord, reveal more of the depravity in me. Now you might go, well, gosh, Eric, I don't want to know more of my depravity. But you know what? The more you understand your depravity, 
the greater you will cling to your, to your master, Jesus Christ, to your shepherd. I've been challenged to look more to see where God is moving rather than to scratch my head, well, why isn't God moving here or there? I think you should do this. Instead, I say, Lord, like the song that we sing, like little kids sing, Lord, open the eyes of my heart. Where are you moving? Help me to hear your voice. And as it says in John 10, verse 5, Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know his voice of strangers. I worry that we are in a world that is heavily influenced by thoughts, ideologies, beliefs, by people who are strangers to the Lord, who do not know the Lord, and even though the Lord knows them, they know nothing about Him. Three for the road, number two. Do you follow? Does your life bear witness? Do you follow? Does your life bear witness? Look with me at verse 7. It says, Then Jesus said to him again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. Now here's the difference. I told you that I believe the elders are the doorkeeper of Hope Community Church. That's really not. Jesus is the doorkeeper of heaven. What does it say? John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then what's the next part? No one comes to the Father except through me. You can't hop the fence. You can't get in from the back door. You only come in through me. So let's keep going. Then Jesus said to him again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. And whoever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Listen, there's a lot of false doors. There's a lot of things in our world that will claim that they can give you what God promises you. Those are thieves and robbers. You know, one of the most empty times of my life was when I was a teenager. And I remember having a conversation with my father. And he said to me, Eric, I don't understand. You seem so angry. You seem so downcast. Everything in your life looks great. And I remember I walked away from my father that day and I thought, you know something, he's right. Everything in my life does look great. Things are going well. Everything seems to be firing on all cylinders. Why am I so downcast? Why am I so empty? Because thieves and robbers. Listen to what Jesus says. And all whoever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear him. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And he will go out, in and out, and find pasture. In your Bibles, you can underline that word pasture, and next to it, look, life. Jesus says, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved, and he will go in and out and find life. What does life look like? Well, look at verse 10, because here's a tough one. The thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. You know, during that time of my life when everything was going well, I realized that I had made a God out of different things in my life. No matter how well they went, they could not live up to the Lord, my Savior. And they left me empty. And like Jesus says here, they stole from me. They killed my soul. And they destroyed me. But listen to what Jesus says. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. What does abundant life look like? I'll give you an example. Last week we were on vacation. And when it was my family and my brother and sister-in-law's family. And every time we're on vacation, we have this tradition. There's a guy's night and a girl's night. So one night the girls, I'm going to be honest, I don't know what they do. But the girls, they just go do something. And us guys, we do the same thing. 
Man, you can just, you can write it down and it's, it's the law. We get together, we order pizza and wings, and we watch a movie, some great guy. Well, last week, here's seven guys who are all sitting in this living room. And I stopped for a moment because I was thinking about this passage and that word abundant life. What Jesus says, he says, uh, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. And as I looked around this room, there were seven of us guys. And I said, guys, hold up for a minute. Before we eat pizza and wings and goof around and have fun and watch a movie, all of that's great. But before we do that, everyone go around and let's like share a life verse. A verse from the Bible that when the heat's on, when the pressure's on, when doubt creeps in, when your faith is challenged, that this is the verse that God has put on your heart and ingrained on your soul. And one by one, every one of these men shared a verse. And I looked around the room and I said, guys, you look around the room because I've got to tell you what, you can get together a, a bunch of guys and eat pizza and wings anytime, but it's very rare to be around with guys who all are in love with Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. This is abundant life. I've seen people who don't know the Lord and they're going through the ringer in life. Hard things going on. And they're hurt. They're crushed. They're angry. They're bitter. They're worn out. They're defeated. Then I see people who know the Lord as their Lord and Savior. And they're going through the same ringer that this group over here is going through. But somehow or another, there's victory. There's life abundant. There's courage. There's strength. What's the difference? Abundant life through their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's keep going. It says the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. He will fight at all costs. But the hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. Jesus says the good shepherd, he'll lay down his life why? Because these are his sheep. He says a hardly doesn't care. Look how it goes on here. Verse 14. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and I am known by my own. Isn't that beautiful? Jesus says, listen, I know you. I know everything about you. But I don't want to lord that over you. I want you to know me. That's the beautiful thing of our Lord and Savior. He wants to be known. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for my sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. This is the Gentiles. This is the non-Jewish population. Them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. You know what the great thing is? Jesus' love is on full display in the cross. His love for humanity is on full display on the cross. But guess what? Jesus' power in this world is displayed through his believers, through his sheep. And I'll tell you what, I am so encouraged Every now and then I'll be on the internet, social media, looking at something, and I'll hear an encouraging word that was given by the Lord to someone who lives far away, in far different circumstances, in different languages. God's on the move. 
I love those stories, the Chronicles of Narnia. If you have little children, read those books to them. Written by C.S. Lewis, the main character is Aslan. Aslan is Jesus Christ. And throughout these books, time and time again, as these mythical creatures interact, there's one thing that they'll often whisper, and it's this. Aslan is on the move. The great lion is on the move. And in the same way, Jesus is on the move. He's moving in this world. He's bringing people to him. Just the other night, I was speaking with a woman, a friend of mine, her name is Lori. Her and her husband were talking with me. And Lori said to me, Eric, my aunts are elderly. They never read the Bible. They want nothing to do with God. But now because of this COVID thing, all of a sudden they're reading the Bible. They're learning. They're growing. God is on the move. There are people who are listening to this video right now, watching, who maybe a few months ago had no interest in God, but here they are. We welcome you. And if we can do anything, please reach out to us. We sit out on our lawn on Sunday mornings. People coming from all over the place, we don't even know who they are. God knows them, and God wants to be known by them. God is on the move. Do you follow? Do you bear witness? Look how this passage goes. Verse 17, Therefore my Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. Think about Jesus praying the night he was betrayed. What did he say? Not my will, but your will, Father, be done. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down. I have the power to take it up again. This command I will receive from my Father. Therefore, there was much division among the Jews because of these sayings. And many said, he is a demon. Why do you listen to him? And others said, these are not the words of one who has a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? Isn't it interesting? And John chapter 9, when Jesus healed the blind man, they tried to discredit whether the man was truly blind. It seems as if that discussion is over. The man was blind, and now he sees. And perhaps he was even sitting there while this debate was going on. Do you follow? Does your life bear witness? When people run up against us, what do they get? You know, I've run into many people who are very upset, very nervous, some angry, some scared. And I just want to be peace. I just want to tell them, listen, you've got a Lord who loves you, who laid down his life for you, and who will lead you through this tumultuous time in your life in this world. Do you hear his voice? Do you follow him? Do you bear witness? Three for the road number three. The good shepherd will lead us through the dangers that lie ahead. The good shepherd will lead us through the dangers that lie ahead. I want to share with you a story that happened a few years ago. My oldest son, Austin, is a runner. He runs cross country in the fall and track and field in the spring. He's a runner at Eastern University up in St. David's in Pennsylvania. Last year, his track season was canceled because of COVID. This fall, his cross country season has been canceled because of COVID. It's a crazy time. But this story happened a few years ago when Austin was in high school. See, his high school coach said, listen, we're going to run in an invitational. We've never run it before. It was called the Six Flags Safari Invitational. It was right here in Jackson, uh, New Jersey, at Six Flags Amusement Park. And Austin was going to be running in a race with 120 runners. But what had him nervous is cross country, we have no anything about it. They start you off and you're running in this open field, but the course could be all over the place. Some places the course gets narrow, some places the course goes downhill. Sometimes the course even goes into the woods. You don't know what you're doing. And as a runner, it's very hard to say, hey, run hard, run fast, but you don't know what's ahead. And I knew that Austin was nervous about this. 
Well, I like to think that I'm a good father. I try. So I got online and I searched and I searched and I searched and I looked up pages and videos and all these things. I couldn't find anything. And then all of a sudden, I found a father who had posted a very grainy, very poor video, but it was the outline of the course. And it showed all the critical points of the course. And he showed a map. And he said, this is what the map is. Let me show you what this map looks like. Well, I reviewed it. And I familiarized myself with the map. And I familiarized myself with the video. And after comparing the map and the video, I called my son and I said, Austin, sit down. I want to show you the race you're going to run. This is where you're going to start. The guy will shoot the gun, 120 of you will take off running. It's very wide. 70, 80 feet wide is the trail. But also, I'm going to tell you to do things that maybe you don't normally do. You know how runners will always say, run your race. Well, sometimes that doesn't work. Sometimes you need to run the right race. So I said, Austin, when this race takes off, I need you to run hard. I need you to get to the front, the very front. The very fastest runners will burst out because they want to set the pace and they don't want to get clogged up in the, in the bulk of the runners. I said, Austin, that's faster than you're normally used to running, but run, get there. Accelerate, put yourself in a good position. In the same way, spiritually, we need to put our heart and our soul in a good place. Well, Austin said to me, Dad, why should I do this? This isn't the race. This isn't what I normally do. I said, Austin, I want you to do this because up ahead, this big wide trail is going to turn and it's going to go from 50, 60 feet wide down to about 15 feet wide. And Austin, if you're caught in the middle of that 120 runners, it's going to be a mess. Get yourself out and run. Know that it's going to get tougher. Austin, there's a part of this race where there's a steep decline. Most runners would say, hey, accelerate down the hill, use gravity, pass a bunch of people. But Austin, I think you need to physically prepare your body, breathe deep, take it easy, rest. Because also, once you get to the bottom of that steep decline, you're going to turn hard to your left, and then there's a brutal hill that you have to climb. And also, when other people who pass you going down that hill and think that they're making a big move, they're going to spend a lot of energy running down that hill, but they don't know what's ahead of them. Austin, when you turn that corner and you see that steep incline, they will be defeated. Why? Because they've used their energy. But Austin, that's when you will accelerate and you will run hard up the hill. And while others are broken, defeated, winded, tired, you will have the endurance. Go on the offense, son. Pass people. Run. Awesome, there's a part of this course where it dips down in the woods and the trail is wet. It means it's slippery. There's some rocks around. Awesome, during this part of the race, be very careful of your feet. Watch the ground. Look where you're stepping. You don't want to roll an ankle. You don't want to slip and fall. Awesome, guard very carefully where you're running. Why do I share this? Well, that day, Austin ran one of the best races he had ever run. Out of 120, he came in 14th place. Many runners, I actually think maybe were more talented than Austin. But I like to think that his preparation in the hand of his father's guidance, he made it. So why do I share this? Well, I don't think you have to be a prophet. 
I don't think you have to be the smartest person in the world to realize that the next four, five, six months are going to be brutal. They just are. Because we are running, and in the midst of it, there are three storms raging around us. COVID-19 is not going away. Really, no matter what you think about it, it doesn't matter. All of us can agree. It's going to be here for a while. I don't know how long, but it's not going anywhere right away. The second storm that's raging is social and racial unrest. That's not going away. I want to be clear that there are legitimate calls for justice that need to and are being processed. Unfortunately, there are also vigilantes that are taking this opportunity to terrorize our society. That's not going anywhere either. I also believe that the 2020 presidential election will test even the most stout heart among us. You know, I thought that 2016 was one of the toughest elections I'd ever seen. It felt like a nasty, drag-out fight. I think 2020 is going to be worse. I think it's going to be a nasty, drag-out fight and fuel with the COVID-19 social and racial unrest. And I really believe that no matter who wins, we could have rioting, we could have all sorts of unrest. It's going to be brutal. But I share that because I really believe, just like in that cross-country race, that we can be prepared. We need to know our shepherd's voice. We need to follow. We need to bear witness. We need to speak truth and love and kindness. Hey, listen. I love to speak truth. Sometimes the love and kindness are lacking. And let me tell you something. Truth goes nowhere if it's not clothed with love and kindness. And then finally, for the road number three, like I said, the good shepherd will lead us through the dangers that lie ahead. And you know why I believe that? Well, look with me. Verse 22. Chapter 10, verse 22. Now, it was the feast of dedication, that's modern day Hanukkah, in Jerusalem, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple of Solomon's porch, and the Jews surrounded him and said to him, how long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, just tell us plainly. Jesus answered and said to them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Jesus said, listen, I spoke it, and you don't believe me. My life bears witness to it, and you still don't believe. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. As I said to him, you know, the world doesn't understand. One of the things they just don't get is they'll say, listen, I don't understand believers. I don't understand the way they act, the things they do, why they spend their time and money doing these things. And the reason why is they don't know the good shepherd. And I don't mean that in a ventral way. We need to love these people, care for these people, and we need to bear witness. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Verse 28, be encouraged. Listen to these verses. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Guys, isn't that wonderful? Sometimes I envision that I'm holding on to Jesus' garment for all that I am. And sometimes I think Jesus goes, Eric, that's not really accurate. You're holding on to me, but I'm going to tell you that I got a grip on you. You're not going anywhere. And nothing will snatch you away from me. And Eric, you will never perish. You'll have eternal life. Look at verse 29. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Do you believe? The Good Shepherd will lead us through this time. Nothing can 
can snatch us from him. Not COVID. Not racial and social unrest. Not a presidential election. Why? Because Jesus says, my father is greater than all of these things. And then he says the great lie, I and my father are one. Nothing can separate us from the love of the Father through Jesus Christ. The devil is the master of chaos. That's what he tries to do. And what we need to do is we need to pray. We say, Lord, in the world of lies, help me to hear your voice. Lord, help me to follow. Help me to bear witness. And Lord, we got some rough times coming. We got some rough times coming. Guide us. As the song says, you're the good, good father. And you're our shepherd. He will lead us through this storm. And he will grow our faith. And he will grow the kingdom through us. It's going to be okay. It's not going to be easy. When Jesus said, I'll give you life abundantly, all abundant life means is he will journey with us through the good, through the hard. That's what a loving God does. He doesn't just come around when it's rejoicing. He's there in the tears. He's there in the hardship. He's there in the fear. He's there to the heartbroken. Let me close this in a word of prayer. Lord, we cling to those words. And I will give them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I am the Father and one. God, we cling to these words. Lord, as we move as a country, as a world, as we move forward in tumultuous times, hard things are ahead of us, Lord. But God, we cling to our captain. We cling to the good shepherd. And you hold us, it says in your word, that not one of us will be snatched from you. Lord, guide us. Pray for our country. We pray for this world that is just brimming with controversy, hurt, pain, sin, ugliness, Lord. God, as the song says, turn our eyes upon Jesus and fall upon your face. And the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of glory and grace. To all the glory be unto you. Lord, thank you for loving such broken, wretched people like us. And Lord, help us to hear your voice. Lord, help us to bear witness. And Lord, help us to follow you. Give us the courage, give us the strength, give us the wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. If there's anything we can do for you, please reach out to us. We'd love to talk with you on the phone. We can safely and responsibly meet one-on-one -on -one with you if you would like. Email, social media, we're out there. Thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful week and may God bless you.